Hey, Lou, I know what an animal lover you are, so this might break your heart, but we do need to tell you there are a lot of professionals here working to make sure that these sea lions are cared for. More importantly, though, they need to figure out why this is happening and how this is happening. We're going to show you two things essentially here at the Marine, the Marine, Care Cam uh, the Marine Mammal Care Center in San Pedro. Uh, San Pedro. Off to my uh, left side, you're going to see some of the more sick sea lions, and then the ones behind us are going to be some of the ones that are on recovery. But let's bring in my friend right here. This is Lauren Palmer, the Marine Mammal Care Center. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. Okay, so we're looking at some of these sea lions, and what you're telling me is some of them could have seizures at any moment because of this algae. What's going on? Right, we're having a domoic acid bloom. It's an algae bloom that produces a toxin called domoic acid, and it works its way into the food chain, and these <laughs> animals actually ingest a lot of fish and so they acquire this toxin. The primary, the primary effects of this toxin is to affect the brain and that's why we see neurological behavior, seizures, coma, some animals will die and some animals will sustain permanent brain damage. Let's talk about some of the importance. So there is a chance you could be walking on a beach in central, northern, or even southern California, you could see a, a seal appearing to seizure. So what's the protocol? What's the first thing we should do? Well, the first thing people should do is alert the rescue agencies. Every county has people that will respond to marine mammals that appear to be in distress on the beach. The worst thing that you can do is actually try to go interact with the animals. That may stimulate them to have a full-blown seizure. They're just not acting normally. They, they don't, they're not aware of their surroundings, what's going on. So leaving them alone is the most important thing people can do. And then we have to ask, if they can ingest it, there's also a possibility that humans can ingest it. So do we humans have to be worried about this algae at some point as well? Well, actually, the California Department of Public Health monitors this algae in the water. And so, yes, we do. And it would be found in shellfish, mussels, clams, crab, any filter feeding organism. Um, but California Department of Public Health and other agencies are actively monitoring um, our food supply. Uh -huh. So um, generally, they're monitoring that very closely. Is it, is it the toughest part of this job that these animals are so cute and you're not allowed to touch them? No, that's not the toughest that's part. That's not the toughest that's part? What's the, the toughest part? part? I think the toughest part is, um, is dealing with animals that, that have a very se severe injury that may not recover fully. Like, yeah. that's, that's hard to deal with. Okay. Well, we're going to keep our eyes on this story. You, you don't name them, but they, but they are very cute. What do you have to say for yourself, sir? Oh, he's a man of few words, Glenn, Glenn and Lou, but we can't blame them. But it, it's good that we know about this problem right now. You might notice them on more beaches in Southern California. We'll have more on this story throughout today. Uh, but for now, Mark Messer, I am in San Pedro, and we'll send it back to the two of you in Hollywood. Mark